Hi, I'm Brooke, training manager at Incorporate Massage. Today we are gonna do a tutorial on tension headaches. Tension headaches are a very big thing in the corporate world and chair massage is the perfect way to work on them because the client is upright rather than face down in a face cradle. So <clears throat> it doesn't take long and you're gonna get really good results. Um, so I believe that the tension headache issue is mainly caused by a forward head posture and then kind of looking down your nose and out your chin, kind of a, a stare. And then you're staring at something pretty close in front of you. So not only are your eyes <clears throat> kind of strained, but so is the, the front of your neck because these muscles are not weight-bearing muscles. So you're gonna get a lot of tension in the back, but the things that are overworked and need some work is all this in front. So I'm going to demonstrate on how to do that. So first you got to know how to seat your client in the chair properly. If they come in for a tension headache and you're going to find that out in your verbal intake. So Kristen is going to be my client. It is Kristen, right? Kristen. I just say it's Christine. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so Kristen, I knew Palmer. <laughs> so Christine is coming to me and I'm going to say, is there anything I can work on for you today? And then she's going to say, oh, I have this tension headache. And tension headaches, they generally feel it on the back of their heads here, like right below their skull at their occiput. Um, so if she says she has a headache, I would ask her, where do you feel it? Do you feel it in your eyes? Do you feel it, you know? So she'll point to it, and if it's right, if it's in back, that is something that we can definitely work on. That's the tension headache. If it's in front, that's a different story. So we're gonna talk about the, we feel it in the back. So go ahead and have a seat. And this chest piece, it moves up and down, in and out, so just take it with two hands and then just put it where you want it. And I will lock it into place. You're probably gonna need to scoot it down just a little bit more, there you go. And then same with the headrest. So with the headrest, you want to instruct them to look at their knees rather than look at the horizon. So you demonstrate looking straight ahead of you what that would look like. So kind of look straight ahead of you and then put your head down. So your chin into a lot of times people put their chin into the headrest so they're kind of looking, sorry, do it right, <laughs> like that. So they're kind of looking forward and then their chins jut out of the chin rest. So they're kind of like this. And then that gives a weird crease in the back of their neck. So you wanna make sure that their head is nice and level. So what I tell them to do is, okay, sit back up, is make sure your eyes are facing your knees and place your face in the face rest so that they are looking completely down. That's gonna give you a nice round air surface area to work on. Lock it into place. So it's secure and arm rest and we're ready to go. Okay, so along with that forward head posture, um, the upper back spine curves a lot. So I like to do a classic spine walk with my thumbs. Um, starting on whichever end, the top or the bottom, you're gonna go from top to bottom, bottom to top, however you wanna start. <clears throat> but to start the massage, I might soften up the erector spinae group on either side, call for some breath. Breathe into my hands, breathe into my palms. Cues like that will help your client to kind of have their own little mini breath meditation. <clears throat> find their spine, and then you're gonna find the grooves <clears throat> away from the uh, process. <laughs> and you're just gonna walk one thumb at a time. Now the trick to this is you want your elbow joints to be pointing out, not in, <clears throat> and you want them to be soft. Because if they're really hard and stick straight, that's gonna put too much pressure into your client's spine and it's not what we're trying to achieve. So nice, soft, elbows out, and your thumbs are not um, supporting too much weight. So Christine, how much pressure am I adding to your spine? Not, not very much. Not very much. Mm -hmm. Medium to light. And as I sink my thumb in between each vertebra, 
I'm just waiting for that tissue to move away from my thumb. I'm not the one moving it. So once I reach the sacrum, I'll do a little traction down towards the floor. So with my body mechanics, my spine is directly lined up with hers. My hara is pointed at my thumbs. And then when I want to traction that um, last few vertebrae down towards the floor, I just lean into it and then my thumb just go down. And then I just start to climb back up. So this is just going to offer a little bit of breath and movement and very, very small flexion in the spine that might have been holding up the head all day. A lot of our corporate clients often sit on their tailbones as well. So this is a really good release for that posture. Okay, and then once you get back up to the base of the neck, take both, um, so with your soft fingers, you don't want to grab. Soft fingers, I'm not grabbing the tissue, I'm just kind of peeling it back this way. If you do something like this, that could be a little claustrophobic for your client. So bring the traps back this way, just with my body weight, and then lean into it, and just move and then I wiggle my body to send a deep jostling motion into her spine. And I go all the way up to the base of the skull. Depending on how much time you have, you can do one thumb at a time, you can do a few strokes up, just depending on how much time you have for the session. But this is a really, really, really good one. Okay, so now I'm just gonna move her hair, I'm gonna be on top of her hair. So now I'm, a, I'm here. So there's that little um, bump right here on her skull. That's the spot that I stop at. And then from there, I just kind of sink my thumbs into that little soft spot right under that little bump. And then the circular motions I'm doing with my thumbs aren't with the thumb joints. It's with me leaning in with my hara, with my spine, and backing off. So the trick with the tension headache is you don't want tension in your own joints. If you have tension in your joints, you're just gonna transmit tension into their heads. If you're being too pokey with this, it's just gonna be counterproductive. So I will even imagine that my thumbs are like really wide, that, they're, that there isn't a bone in there, that they're just really soft. <clears throat> And then the joint right below them has absolutely no tension in it. And the movement is coming from my spine, not from my joints. And as you can see, I'm also putting a little pressure down here on the traps. Just kind of that extra little something something. And you might find something that feels like some compromised tissue, something that feels a little stressed. So once you do, a little friction. Just all around it. Very light, medium to light pressure. Tension headache does not need tons of pressure. So I'll work out these little occipital muscles. And I'm just doing this on top of her hair so you guys can see, but you should do it under the hair. <laughs> Another good thing to know is if your client does say that they have a headache, you might want to say, okay, um, do you mind if I do a scalp massage then? And this isn't technically scalp massage, but it is in their hair and they might not appreciate it. You also do not want to use any lotion. The reason you wouldn't want to use lotion or oils is because A, they might not appreciate it, and you can't grip and feel the tissue as you are moving. You'll just slide around on it. Right. And the point to this is to kind of tease the tissue loose from being kind of tense and tight. With that forward head posture, these little occipitals are very shortened, crunched short. Okay, so once you've gotten from that little process right here, and I'm, the name of it is escaping me, the mastoid process, Right here, once you've reached that end, then, then go above and around the ears. Same thing, just little circular motions 
moving from your spine. And then you're gonna feel a little lumpy thing, and that's tissue that's just kind of bunched up. So go ahead and tease it loose. Very little pressure, and just grab it and pull it away from where it was with your sticky fingers, not with any sort of grip. Okay, so that's how to kind of loosen up the back. You could also do just some petrissage on the side of the neck, a little breaking, but again, my finger pressure is very, very light. The only thing that's gripping that is just the stickiness of my finger pads there. <clears throat> okay, so you do that to either side. Just break up each side of the neck meat on either side of the spine. So I'm just kind of doing this breaking motion. And my elbow up here in the air, I'm trying to accommodate the camera view, but you don't want your elbow up here because you're transmitting tension into your own neck. So put it back down, move to where you need to move, and continue. Check in with yourself constantly. Okay, so once that's all nice and released, you would have your client sit up. Oops, go ahead and sit back for me. Place mm -hmm. your hands on the chest piece to support. Okay, and this is how you'd work on the front of their neck. I like to throw in a tiny little jaw massage here. Again, no oil, no lotion. Nobody appreciates that on their face in the middle of work. And just along the ridge of the jaw, just tease that skin loose. Okay, so then once that's done, I get my fingertips right on either side of the, that bony, that pointy part of the jaw, just right underneath it, not up inside, just right underneath it. This is a very, very tender, tender point. This does not need, need to be messed with. So just right up underneath the jaw like this, I get my fingertips, the very tips of my fingers away from my nails, and then I just give it a little bit of, a little tiny bit of pressure just so I have hold of them, and then I say, do you feel like I'm choking you at all? No. No, feel okay? All right, so what I want you to do is look down at your lap and then back up to the ceiling. And as she looks up to the ceiling, my fingers are combing her scalings and her SCM and then look back down. Now you could also do this with your breath. When you look down, breathe in. When you look up, breathe out or vice versa. And it would maybe be and then with your next inhale, look down. And that depending on the length of someone's neck, it might be three breaths. Okay, now that I'm at her collarbone, just say, now just look at the horizon and then you would just kind of sit right here in the collarbone. And again, just make sure you, the client doesn't feel like you're suffocating them or cutting off circulation. And you just sit here until that SCM scalene attachments just kind of melt. And you can wiggle your own body around to give it a little bit of motion, but I wouldn't be in here needing that because they can get really sensitive and hang on even tighter if that's what you do. So really nice, really slow, gentle, gentle. And once those kind of melt and give in, you can do the collarbone. And this, I just pull the tissue back and forth. No pressure in or down. And then your thumbs in the back can be doing a little massage on the upper traps at the same time. And I like to bring the tissue into the neck, kind of to support the cervical spine. Just pull that tissue in and then kind of stretch it out. So that in and back. Okay. Okay. So once you've got that all done, you can do some more scalp stuff. So I like to grab the hair from the ears and just get a really loose, loose grip if the person has hair and just kind of put a little weight into your fists. And this will 
and one at a time, not both at the same time, one at a time. So I'm gripping the hair, I'm just kind of tightening my grip and that's pulling the hair away from the parietal bones. And if you feel any hair in your grip that's a little stressed, you can feel that and you can loosen it up. Do you feel like any of your hair is being pulled uncomfortably? No. Okay, then check in. So all I'm doing is just barely tightening my grip and I'm feeling the hair and the scalp kind of melt away from the parietal bone. So once that side's done, I'll do the other side. That side feel okay? That's good. And then maybe a little squish there, here and there. Okay, so then I widen my stance. I get my uh, the palms of my hands up underneath the ridge of the occiput and then and then I push the ground away. I'm not actually squeezing her head and pulling her head off of her spine. I'm just putting a little pressure um, right here on either side. And I've got my fingertips on her parietal bones. And then I use my feet and I push the ground away from me. And that just gives a teeny bit of traction to her head. And then the magic happens when I just wiggle my spine. And then her spine starts mm -hmm. to wiggle. And it's a very deep wiggle. It's not anything really extreme. My movement translates the movement into my hands, which then translates the movement into her spine. And scene.